How's it going, guys? All right. Here's another one. Port forwarding and Plex. Um, I can't tell you the amount of people I've tried to help with this, so I'm just going to make a video so that when they ask me, I can point them to this video and for everyone else to benefit as well. So Plex, port forwarding, remote access outside of your house. I'm going to do this through PFSense. Um, the, the fundamentals of this are the exact same, whether you're using DDWRT, Linksys, Tomato, um, WatchGuard, uh, Fortigate, PFS, whatever firewall you're using, it's all the same. So, um, I have my Plex already installed. I have my Plex library, my Plex accounts, everything already set up. Um, I've deleted everything that I had set up in my PF sense so I can recreate it to show you how that it's done. So let's change to the top screen. Okay, so here's my PF Sense. Um, uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to Plex. Uh, we wanna enable remote access. Go ahead and click on enable remote access. It's going to fail. I'm gonna give it a sec, let's fail. Come on, fail, fail faster. Okay, that's taking too long. Uh, oh, hey, there it goes. Okay, cool. So that is my public IP address. You hooligans can have that because as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to go reset and get a new public IP address. Um, okay, make sure you put in your internet upload speed. This helps Plex determine how it's handling transcodings, buffering, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff in the background. I'm not going to get into it. Um, you can manually specify the port. I have this ticked uh, just to force 32400 back in one of the versions, there was a bug um, that you actually had to click this. And it, yeah, anyways, you uh, checked or unchecked is fine. If you wanna use a different port because your ISP is filtering this port or keeping an eye on this port, by all means, change it. You can change it from anywhere between, you know, please don't put it below 1024, but you, you can theoretically put it anywhere between two and 65535. Um, that's legitimately the port range of TCP IPv4. And six? I'll have to check on uh, if IPv6, if that's the port range. I don't know. Um, anyway, so I leave my default 32400. So let's go into PFSense. PFSense, I'm just going to go right into it. Firewall, NAT, create a new rule. I'll add it to the top of the list. I want it from my WAN interface. I want protocol TCP and UDP. Um, this is where a lot of people miss this. Um, UDP is not necessary. You know what? I'm not above ignorance. It is just TCP. Okay, I'm, then I'm wrong. There are a few other ports. You can go look this up. Um, I will put this in the description as well. Actually, you know, I'll just put a link to the support article. Um, so there are UDP ports, so I'm not completely wrong. Anyways, TCP 32400 for access to MediaPlex server. This is absolutely required. Um, if you want anything else, if you're in home, uh, if you're doing that kind of filtering in your own network or you put Plex in a different VLAN or subnet, um, you'll need these as well. Okay, so then just TCP. Fine, I was wrong. Uh, 32400, 32400, redirect. Mine is 100010. We also wanted to go 32400, description. Plex Nat, let me through. Uh, yeah, so that's all fine and dandy. I'll make another video about Nat reflection. Um, but if you're inside of the same subnet, if you're if your Plex server is on the same LAN as the TVs or phones that you're watching in Wi-Fi, you don't have a problem. You don't have to deal with Nat reflection. Um, if you put your Plex server in a different subnet, then yes, you'll have to deal with Nat reflection. Um, or else you're going to get issues inside of the, behind the same uh, public IP address if you're within different subnets. Again, different video. We'll make a networking video that talks about NAT reflection and why that's important. Um, okay, so all of this is done. We'll click save. We'll click apply. And okay, so that's done. Uh, and if we go to firewall and rules, WAN, uh, NATplex, let me through. Okay, so we have no requests going through this rule right now. Um, great thing about PFSense is that it'll actually show you how many bytes have gone through a specific rule um, and how many active sessions that you have. So if I come back over to Plex, 
and we click retry on 32400 if we did this correctly which we did come on this check is always so slow you can also just google uh, is my port open go to a port checker tool 32400 is open okay cool Okay, cool. Look, fully accessible outside of the network. Uh, that is our IP address. That's the external port and that's the internal port. You don't want to do uh, cross port forwarding. So you don't want to set your external port to a different internal port unless you don't care about uh, automatic setup and flex. That, more specifically, what I mean is if you do change, let me go back to the net rule here. This has to equal this. If you don't, there's going to be a problem and the automatic stuff is not gonna work. It will be accessible from outside of your network, but Plex won't be able to realize that. And you'll have to manually set it up in any device that you try to connect with. So match this to that, hit save, apply, you're good. So PFSense, that's how you uh, port forward for uh, Plex. And realistically, that's how you port forward for anything else. Um, so yeah, okay, bye.